Hello, good morning. Um, this video is again covering something that I've touched on previously, which is dynamic effects. But I feel that they've been updated a little bit and the menu is certainly better. So I wanna just go through dynamic effects again. Um, so I'm here on my Gulfias tree map and I've got two characters laid out and I wanna look a bit at their effects. So when you go into a record, a character sheet, there's now, oh, this also, sorry, I should have said, this involves having the module called Dynamic Effects Using Active Effects, which gives you a few more options for how you handle these. There's also a very good module called Dynamic Effects Using Active Effects SRD, and someone has gone through and taken all magic items um, in the SRD, which can be used with this module, and has put them into one compendium. So if you're using standard loot like Cloak of Protection, you don't have to go and make all this. You can just go and get it. So that's Dynamic Effects using Active Effects SRD. But with this module enabled, before, and, and if you've used Active Effects, you definitely might have found this, AC. AC was going crazy for characters. And no matter what, you type over it, and it would just change back straight away, and you didn't know why. The reason it happened is because a lot of mundane items that were technically equipment they had an override feature in for ac so i even made like a completely normal non-magical mundane like necklace like an rp necklace that someone had found and it was breaking the ac from a character um because it was technically reverting the ac back down to, to 10 every time it took me a long time to find it what i love about the new system is there's now an effects tab, and you can see all effects that exist on your character. Ones that are either temporary, passive, or inactive. Um, that's really, really useful, because if something's happening and you don't know why, you can come to this tab and go, well, hold on. Like, I could see a situation where the Argent Aegis is a special, like, artifact shield I've given Halvor. If his AC was too high and we couldn't work it out, I'd come here. And you might see that if shield was also in passive effects, I'd go, aha, he's benefiting from the AC of two shields at once. I know what to go and fix now. So it's very, very useful. Um, so you can see in here, he's affected by several. This isn't just about items. You can use this for abilities and features as well. I will start with an item though. So we can see here, the first one is stone of good luck. Now they got this from, I think, Babala Saga. And if I go and look in the description of the item in his bag, you can see, while this polish agate is on your person, you gain a plus one bonus to ability checks and saving throws. In terms of how the item was designed, that's quite straightforward. So plus one on checks, plus one on throws. Let's have a look at the item. Now, sometimes when you're in a player, it might not let us do this. If it doesn't, there's somewhere else we can go. In the effects tab, I see stone of good luck. There we go. They're adding, they're adding a feature for players to edit that soon, but that's fine. I can still go and look at it. You could edit the effect one while it's in your compendium or while it's in your items menu. Once you've given it to a player, at the moment, the module doesn't like the effect being edited um, once it's in someone's bag. I think because it would then have to maintain potentially multiple versions. For you as a DM, I can't imagine you're going to have your players programming in effects. This is normally going to be you're going to give them an item and you program the effect beforehand or you talk with a player or you see a way that you can improve a player's automation using effects, which I'll talk about in a minute, and you'll apply it. So although it's a bit annoying to hit an error message, I don't think it's a problem really. But if I go into the effects menu on Halvor, I see the stone of good luck is there. You go, you'll see here you've got ways of toggling it off and on. If something happens plot-wise, maybe they are affected by a spell, which you can see, a, you can imagine a situation, can't you, where someone is affected by a spell that gives them disadvantage on wisdom saving throws, but maybe they have a shield that grants them wisdom saving throws you might think, well, tell you what, just disable the shield so we can sort this spell off, oh, but now the AC goes down. 
So you can get you can get awkward things like that. So it's quite handy being able to just toggle an effect because you could have the AC of the shield and the wisdom save, um, the wisdom bonus of it as two separate effects. So you can disable the wisdom but not lose the AC. So I really like it for that reason. Uh, but you can toggle them off and on. I'm going to click Edit, and we can see here you put a description in. It pulls. Yeah, there's some minor orange um, options in here if you want to change the name of the effect. Because again, that item that has that shield that has two effects, you might want to name them differently so you identify them better in this list. Mm -hmm. You can set a duration for if it's made an active effect. But here's the main thing: effects. So we have two effects on this bonus abilities save custom added one the priority i haven't come up against as being a problem yet but i suppose if you were to set up conflicting effects or maybe things that rely on previous effects the priority system is quite handy for starting to set that up but i i if obviously a priority system means that it will on the character sheet one particular um effect will be treated and handled before another I'm I'm yet to find a situation where I need that, but it's good to know it's there. So here we can go in and we can see the effect of uh, the bonus to these abilities is plus one. Just by having that in his bag now, he gains that effect at all times. Same for his um, cloak of protection. If I edit that, we see the same. Now, because these, it goes off these attributes menu, so you'll see there's two different things here. A bonus. We haven't had to put a plus, it's just custom, because a bonus, it knows, is an addition. So that's why we just said bonus one. When it comes to something like AC, which can be up or down, you'll see we get more options on custom multiply, that would be crazy, um, add, downgrade, upgrade, and override. Override's quite a handy one for some things I'm going to show you shortly. But by having this cloak equipped, the, eight, the attribute armor class, you can see there's a huge list here. Imagine how boring the video would be if I went through all of them. Um, but as I'm sure you can imagine, it goes off abilities, DCs, modifiers, bonuses to things like attacks, range attacks, spell attack, uh, currencies, different details, resources I'll talk about in a minute, skills, um, traits, loads of different things we can do. So here we have plus one to our AC and plus one to bonuses. If we were to unequip that cloak, the Cloak of Protection would move into inactive effects. It's still on his person. It's still something he can have access to, but it isn't active at the moment. Then we have traits. I'm not going to use Halvor for this. I'm going to use my monk. Well, my monk has been imported into my DM's world now, so this is an old version of my monk. I've not looked at this in a while. I probably should have checked this before I started this video. Um, he is... A different um, sort of character. He's he's Monk. I've used an Unearthed Arcana um, spec for him, which is, um, oh God, what's it called? Way of Tranquility, Path Tranquility. Um, a healing spec for monks. Very similar to Paladin's Lay on Hands. They get, well, two things. Monks get key equal to their level. They get these pool of healing hands, which is equal to their monk level times 10. And then you have things such as um, their AC, similar to a Barbarian, Unarmored Defense, which goes off a calculation of 10 plus Wiz Modifier plus Dex Modifier. I can sort all that up out using effects. I don't have to worry about that. So here's how I've done that. I also realized I made a video yesterday about Tidy Sheets 5e where I said that um, you don't have favorites. I realized since you do, but swapping to that sheet clears the favorites. So on the favorites tab, there's a little bookmark. And if you click something on a bookmark, it becomes a favorite and it goes back here. So I'll have to put a note on that video saying I'm an idiot and I realized it later. So first of all, I want to look at key. Well, again, I don't think I can edit it in here because it's technically an owned item, but let me just check. Yeah, we can't, but that's fine. We could do it in the compendium. I could do it as a DM when I made the character, or I can go to the effects tab. So in the effects tab, I can see key is inactive. That's fine. Um, it's because it's very, very passive all the time. If I go and look at edit effect. Now this ties into a little of what I was talking about with character sheets in a previous video. If 
I look at his sheet, every character sheet has three resources set up, and the blank are called resource one, two, and three, primary, secondary, tertiary. Some characters will never need that. There might be something you don't use in there. I'm trying to think of a class that has absolutely nothing like that. Maybe Ranger, perhaps. Um, but in here, I've put key as my primary resource. In there, uh, you'll see in the cog as well, that's set to be something that recovers on a short rest. In key, the spell, the feature, I've put an effect on that the resource primary max, so not how many you've got, but the maximum you can have, is overrided to be. Now, I've not found a great list online for all of these syntaxes. There will be one somewhere I need to go and look into and find out. If I find that, I'll put a link in with a little bit of trial and error here or asking on the Foundry Discord. Um, effect value is at classes.monk.levels. So the, because when you have a number of key equal to your monk level, that's saying the maximum for the primary resource is always to be overridden to be the same as my number of monk levels. Priority five. Separately, if I go to unarmored defense, the monk, and I edit that one, again, in the wrong, uh, in the wrong tab there, unarmored defense, monk, if I edit that, attributes, armor class at any time. Now with the AC we had for our cloak of protection, we didn't do override, we did add, because we were wanting to add one AC to whatever we had. Here, we're, we're defining, same as a barbarian, our AC is very specific, and it's very kind of locked, almost. Um, so here, I've got that my armor class is overridden to be 10 plus abilities dex modifier, plus abilities wisdom modifier. Now, this could be where priority comes into effect, actually, because if my monk then got a cloak of protection, and I want to put AC to go up by one, depending on the priority, if I had a lower priority, or is it a higher priority? I have to check. I think higher priority is after. Um, it might add that one, and then after that, override it back down to the calculation of unarmored defense. So you may want something like that to be quite a low priority, like unarmored defense, because there could be other short-term effects or items or magical equipment that overrides it. So that's actually, yeah, just, I'm glad it came to me. Well, I wish it comes to me before I started making the video, but yeah, that could be a good use of priority. Um, then we have healing hands. So in here, I've got resources secondary, because I had key first and healing hands a second. Override to be, this is where, this is where the maths lessons start coming back in, bod maths. Brackets over divide multiplication addition subtraction. Uh, it's going to be 10 multiplied by classes monk level. Separately, I've now talked about this on another video. I've set the monk abilities to have resource costs. So using, um, here we go, resource consumption, using flurry of blows uses one of my resource primary value. So when my monk uses a key ability, it burns one of his key. There we are, it burns one of his key down. When he tries to do it when he's empty, it'll tell him. The key will replenish when he rests, and the character sheet at all times knows how much key and how much healing hands he should have. I hope you'll agree that that is automation that will make combat much easier, particularly if you have new players um, who find it, you know, fewer things to track the better. I don't think there's really any reward in gameplay in remembering when your key should have recharged and, you know, when you're tapped and, oh, actually, it turns out two rounds ago when I used um, Step of the Wind, I shouldn't have been able to do that. And now we're all in that situation where it's like... Do we retcon combat? Do we say you're back here as a knock-on effect? Do we just say, oh, well, don't do that again. Keep more of an eye on it. It just takes all that away. Um, I feel like there was something else I was going to talk about in this video, but I can't remember what it was. So rather than drag the video on, if I remember, I'll have to... Oh, he shouldn't have that. That was from a test video I did. There we go. Um, yeah, so that's dynamic effects. 
it's not, there's something else. I'm gonna remember. You're probably gonna get a shorter video from me after this. I'm gonna click and the click stop record and, and go shit. Um, as ever, hope you found the video useful. Just comment, let me know if there's anything else that you want to see in a video, any questions you've got. Feel free to check out my Curse of Strahd campaign, Tuesdays, half seven uh, in the evening, GMT at twitch.tv forward slash Harrison underscore stream. But otherwise, thank you very much and I'll see you soon.